this is honestly the best way to describe this episode and honestly the the series so far must everything be boring and sad yep boring and sad G'day guys and welcome to Raging Rhino. It is that time of the week and or season one episode four has just dropped. Of course the first two episodes for me were quite boring and sort of a bit of a slow burn as everybody's calling it. Episode three was not too bad in regards to the pacing of it sort of picked up and it helped make those first two episodes make a little bit more sense. Now if you haven't checked out my reviews I'll put a little pinned comment up here you can check that out. I did one video for the first three episodes because of course they released the first three episodes in one hit. Now I do find it quite funny how they can't seem to get a consistent running time for these episodes where the first episode was 42 minutes then we got 38 minutes 43 minutes and this one is now 50 minutes now if you take out the credits and that opening crawl thing that they do at the very beginning this episode will probably be about 43 minutes or something like that there's a fair bit of time taken up in credits and all of that sort of thing but like I said, if you want to check out my review, you can. It's on my channel. There was also another video that I did this week in regards to what they're putting into this series in regards to it, whether or not it's for kids or not. Now, it does have a TV 14 rating, so kids above the age of 14 can actually watch this. But I still think that with those first couple of episodes, they really probably wouldn't get it. It's, it's that slow and boring that I reckon a lot of them would tune out. But that's my thoughts on it. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into this. As per usual, you'll get my reactions throughout the episode. And at the end, I'll give you my thoughts and my review at the end. So uh, let's get straight into this, shall we? I wonder what the consequences are going to be for him. We'll see. I'm going to risk my ass for the Starpath unit. If I came for you. But that unit would have been helpful, surely. Hey, Coruscant. Is this the first time we've actually seen it in any of the series that they've done? Oh, here we go. Here we go. We get to see the inept men. See, it's stuff like this that I reckon kids, it's no, just going to go right over their head. I mean, it's going over my head. He's got a kyber crystal around his neck and the explanation means I'll nothing. You're on something I need to worry about. No. Well, it's a long walk through the night. <laughs> and what, his arm's going to be a problem to walk? Who is he? <laughs> if you change that in any way, you and I are going to have a big problem. I think Cassian will just shoot you in the face. Hang on, I I don't really understand that. Like, aren't they aren't the Imperials already on Ferrix with the those people? Like, haven't they already taken over the planet and it is already in their jurisdiction? I, I'm a little confused by that. I want the full Ferrix report. It's my sector. An Imperial Star Party unit was stolen from the Steergard Naval Yard and found at the scene. That gives me jurisdictional access. You've been here, what, just over a year? Okay, that clears that up. You might want to steady the To some degree. There's one of your inept men. There's your AK-47. Gee, she didn't really do a good job of, like, settling them about him. They could be thinking he's an Imperial spy or something, like... I know that she's giving him the word, but fuck. It's very blase. Mother. <laughs> Why does she slap him like that? I wonder. As opposed to you when? trust him with our lives? That's my call to make. So answer the question, do you? Yes or no? Jesus. These guys are asking some pretty decent, legitimate questions and she's just brushing them off like... Fucking hell. Don't lecture me on vulnerability. No one's more at risk than I am. Where's Bale? You think I have There's an Easter egg for you, Grace. Are we done? Who is he? He's Clem. He's here. That's all that matters. But we're wasting daylight. Let's get on with it. <laughs> He's Clem. He's here. That's all that matters. She had a massively long walk with Andor and she didn't come up with a better, like, way of explaining it. Well, it's a bit late to cancel. 
But at your pleasure. Don't do this again. Oh my God. There's rumor you must everything be boring and sad. Yes, this show is boring and sad. That's the best way to describe this fucking show. Must everything be boring and sad? Yep. Because they know no one's stupid enough to try it. No one but us. <laughs> that whole saying again, no one's stupid enough, so let's not These arm it enough. Nasmabrani, it's a temple. Or... Alert me when this materializes into something more. Oh different. god, Until she can't act, act for shit. To your Thank you, she looked like <laughs> I gotta show that again. Alert me when this materializes into something more different. <laughs> Till then, can find future activities to your sectors. Oh Thank my you. god. Here we are spending your valuable time with this issue. <laughs> Stop opening your eyes so wide. Wow, that's where the episode ends. This is honestly the best way to describe this episode and honestly the the series so far. Must everything be boring and sad? Yep. Boring and sad. Okay, this episode, let me see if I can break this episode down a little bit. Andor, obviously, is now with this little band of rebellion troops on, like, you know, not really troops, they're just this little group of people that are obviously wanting to go against the Empire. Uh, I don't really know what their motivation is for that. Um, and every explanation that we get for why, like, Andor's there. It's almost like every woman is the leader in this, and every dude, even this guy that you see on the screen now, are just the inept guys that fucking were advertised before we even got this Andor series. Man. I... Andor gets dropped off. They're waiting days and days and days. Again, they walked all this way and the best explanation that she can come up with is that Andor's there and we need him. And, and it was always a part of the plan, even though they don't really believe that and they're really sus and curious on who Cassian actually is. He gave himself a, a fake name. And it's just really, like, jarring. This episode was... Horrible. Horrible. There's no action in it whatsoever. It's boring as hell. You get a few TIE fighters and a few and you get a speeder bike. You know, there you go. There's your there's your Easter eggs. I'm surprised that she didn't mention that. Uh, I'm talking about Grace Randolph mentioning that um in her little rant. Like, there mustn't be enough Easter eggs for her. But like honestly, this this episode was boring it was slow people are just going to call it the slow burn I, again i came out with the video about like whether or not this is for kids or not and there was an article that i read in that and there was one really good point in that article is that it's that slow and that boring that kids will get like distracted that they're, they're, they're not going to sit there and watch this this is boring as shit like, a lot of the conversations and stuff are going over my head. And a lot of it, I'm just sitting there going like, okay, can we speed this up a little bit? They go through the plan on what they're going to do to, to raid and steal from this garrison that they're going for. I find the explanation of how they're able to do this so funny. It's almost like what they did with the uh, with the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, where there's no shields on the base because nobody would be stupid enough to attack it. It's like, there's not enough guards, there's not enough soldiers at this garrison because nobody's stupid enough to attack it. It's, it's so pathetically ridiculous. Wow. We're four episodes in. The best episode so far is episode three. And to be honest with you, in episode three, there's one conversation that takes place and that's between Andor and the old guy in the in the warehouse and that action scene that sort of follows that which is okay and then that episode ends they are all really really sus on cassian all of these people 
they're going through the plan and he's like, it's a suicide mission. And then they explain that there's going to be some media shower and that's obviously going to help them get out. He got given the kyber crystal by the old guy. I can't fucking remember his name and I don't care to try and remember his name. But he got the kyber crystal thing from the old guy in payment or like he wants it back once he gets his 200,000 credits for doing this mission. Cassian doesn't seem to give a fuck about finding his sister anymore. It's just going to end up falling in his lap somewhere along the way. And the Imperial chick, this Imperial chick is like horrible. She looks horrible. She acts horrible. In the interrogation, you saw my reaction, not the interrogation, in the fucking interview thing where she's trying to get the information. In here, she's constantly like wide-eyed, like, I can't believe you're not allowing me to have the information. And like, it's just really fucking weird. The only thing that makes this Star Wars are the TIE Fighters, the speeder bikes, and possibly the uniforms. That's it. And that's these uniforms, the Imperial uniforms, the ISB uniforms. This, the, the, what happens here, obviously it's in his jurisdiction. He's the one that's not giving the information to that other Imperial bitch. Um, these guys are like children. I wasn't even here, says the commander. The other guy, the fat dude at the back there, raises his arm to ask a question and he goes, are you serious? Doesn't even give him the time to, to speak or anything. And he, the, 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 the guy that set everything off in the last one while the main guy was away, the leader of the, the, the security, the young uh, leader of the security, I don't think he's got a word in this. He goes back to Coruscant and finds his mum, goes back and lives with his mum. His mum gives him a nice old slap, gives him a hug, and then lets him come inside. And that's all we get to see of him. That's his consequences for killing people and stuff like that. We'll see if there's more to come. But in regards to telling a, a nice cohesive story where the audience can actually track what's happening and it makes sense to the audience, this is failing big time. I will say it probably looks better than any other thing that we've got in regards to the visuals. At least you can't tell that they're filming this in the volume. But whoop de doo The quality of the writing, the quality of the directing, the quality of the plot and the entertainment value of this is fucking shit. It's down the toilet. Once again, I reckon the best conversation that takes place is him trying to talk Cassian into becoming more a part of this rebellion that he's trying to form. And again, I think about it and I go, okay, Mon Mothma and, and her husband and this guy, we're five years away from A New Hope. 14 years has passed since the, uh, the Empire has been formed and Palpatine took over as the Emperor. I would think that they'd be a little bit more organized, a little bit more like together as the rebellion by now. That would have been my thoughts on it. Obviously him and Mon Mothman know each other. So like, obviously he's pretending to be like this happy-go-lucky collector, seller, like he's got this shop and it's all a front for the, the rebellion that they're forming and they go behind the scenes and Mon Mothma's complaining that at the bank, she's not able to get money so willy-nilly and so easily anymore because they're constantly changing staff. She's constantly got a new driver. And it seems that her husband isn't really on her side. Again, this episode really goes uh, towards what they were saying and how they were advertising this as all the inept men, the, the corner-cutting boys, and really, really shows that. They haven't yet given these strong female characters their, their true power and strength yet. But I'm sure that's coming. And that's not the biggest thing. Because if you were to flip the... if you were to, It's not the fact that they're female is what I'm getting at. The, the, if you were to flip them and make them men and put the women in the... In the like vi switch the roles basically around, it would still be shit have the inept women instead of the inept men, and it would still be shit. The writing is pretty bad. 
And I know because of all the Disney shills out there, and this is the best Star Wars we've got since Disney took it over. Every new thing that comes out seems to be the best thing in Star Wars. This is now the best thing in Star Wars. This is fucking boring and sad. I find the, the conversations that these guys have in, in this scene here, they're trying to ask questions of her. She's the leader. They're, these guys are trying to ask questions to find out what this guy is, who he is, Cassian obviously coming in, and so late in the game in regards to this theft that they're going to be doing. And her explanation is, we need him and he's here. And it was, and then she's trying to play it off like it was always a part of the plan. They've got a spy inside the Imperial base that gets pissed off when he finds out that there's this new guy on the block. And then at the end, you get his mission brief on what he needs to know, and the episode ends. It's boring and sad. It is honestly, again, this is the best line to explain this series, and especially this episode. Must everything be boring and sad? That's it. That's all I got for you guys. I, I really don't know. This, <laughs> this isn't really a review because there's nothing to review. It was boring. There's a lot of, like, again, walking down hallways. We spent like a minute or two of watching that uh, security guy walk down hallways through Coruscant just to get to his mum's house so that she could slap him, hug him, and invite him inside. Boring and sad. Anyway, if you're watching the series, please let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I know there's a lot of people out there that aren't watching it, so based on this review or other reviews that you've seen, let me know your thoughts on the series or on this episode specifically in the comments below. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you in two days for Casual Rage where we'll be breaking down this episode. It won't take long. And of course, next week for episode five. Later, guys.